All right. Um <clears throat> How's it going? How's it going? What's up Cade? What's up K? Welcome to my stream. I'll just probably stream for a little bit today. We'll see uh how much energy I have for motivation. Um so I'm I'm still just going to keep working on this web socket game that we kind of worked on last stream. I did make some changes to convert all the TypeScript so it's a little bit more manageable because it was becoming really hard to work on when everything is in one file. What's up, Fu Sin? What's up, Joe Williams? Welcome to the stream. Um, and someone else in my Discord is offering to help out a little bit on this project. So it's kind of looking through his code. He added a basically a zombie spawn and a, a human spawn and added some type of like team functionality. So it's going to look through what he did and try to either pull it over or just re-implement it. Uh, hopefully that doesn't make him mad if I re-implement it, but need to figure out what's going on here. So he has some, let's zoom in a little bit. He has if game state all zombie true, any zombie false. Uh, <clears throat> Joe Williams asks, why are you using web sockets, my dude? Um, well, typically when you build a game, you use it with WebSockets because that's the only way you can get the low latency and lower like uh, network traffic for your game. In most games, multiplayer games are always built with some type of socket like TCP, UDP, just because there's a lot of overhead and you're constantly sending messages from the client to the server and vice versa. All right, what is he doing here? So if the game player length is greater than start players, then yeah, this is all in the repo. This is all in a uh, project. Let's see, web socket game. Um, let's see. So in the game, I got rid of all the scoreboard stuff. Like I wasn't even going to planning to take care of the scoreboard. So we got to get rid of that stuff. So get rid of leaderboard. That'll go away. And then I think we have some like random offset in the code from the leaderboard stuff. I forget how big the leaderboard was. I think we gave it some type of styling. Leaderboards width was 140. So if I look through the code for like a 140 hard coded, get rid of that. Oh, what's up, Bri? Uh, yeah. So this YouTuber, Bri, also known as Astral, my Discord. Uh, he's he's been contributing a little bit to this project. So yeah, I was trying to read through your code a little bit, try to understand uh, what's going on, make sure I understand what's going on. Uh, we could either do some refactoring a little bit, or we could try to bring that code. But basically, the idea was he added in like game modes. So like, one person starts as a zombie, one person starts, at, or everyone else starts as a human. And it looks like he has some like hard coded zombie spawn points. And let's see where he does this. So when you join, is a zombie true? Big zombie. What's that doing? Start game. For every player, turn them all the zombie false, and then we pick a random zombie. 
Yeah, I think that's the idea. I mean, we could probably add like another like feature where you can like press an attack button. <clears throat> Why not raw web sockets from Node.js itself? Because we didn't do that. Sometimes that's the easiest answer. We just picked an option and we're going forward with it. Um, you're using socket IO because it gives you a little bit more uh, out of the box, I believe. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to the server. I'm going to go to source game controller. And we're just going to start adding some stuff in. <laughs> So we can just go ahead and put this here. Pig zombie, turn zombie. Um, I'm not sure what zombie spawn is, so let's go back up to the top. I think it should just be like some hard-coded uh, X and Y, zombie spawn X and Y. I will say I did port all this all the TypeScript because stuff was just getting, um, it's hard to like do anything without TypeScript, honestly. I'm going to make a new type called t-point. Um, I should probably rename this a t-rectangle if I wanted to be consistent. So let's just do that real quick. T-rectangle, t-rectangle, t-rectangle. Don't know where else I might be using it. I'm using it here too. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and export that. So zombie spawns. Maybe we can actually get that hard coded from the map. So I mean, for right now, I'm just gonna say like const uh, zombie spawn is a t point. Oops, and that's gonna be equal to x of 100, y of 100 for now. All right, so if we were to take in that T point here, I could actually just do this. Instead of index of zero, index of y, or one, it just usually makes sense to just use an object because that's more descriptive. Index zero for being X, index one for being Y is very cryptic. Um, and then there's a flag added called is zombie. So let's go to where zombie is, which should be a T player, which I don't remember where that is. So, what did I do? Uh, let's see. I forget how to do this. Is this a hash symbol T player or something? There it is. So, is zombie would be a Boolean. I could just go ahead and make this a T player as well. All right, so now when you join the server, I still need to refactor all this code. Like this is the client code. It's a single TS file. I need to pull this apart into like separate modules so it's a little bit more manageable. Um, yeah, so the, the idea of the game rules is everyone starts or joins the server and then the server picks one random player to be the zombie. It's kind of like tag. So if the zombie touches you, you become a zombie. Now there's two zombies playing against all the other humans. And if all the humans end up getting tagged be before like a certain time limit, or maybe there could be some type of like game objective where you have to collect and open an unlocked door so you can escape the compound or the map, then the humans win. Um, but uh, what, what are we doing here? So pick zombie. So I think he was calling pick zombie. Uh, when we started the game, so I don't know if we have a start game anywhere. I think we had a restart game, reset game. I'll just grab this whole file. And we're going to go ahead and put that here. We don't care about scores. We deleted the scores because I don't think it's that important for right now. Um, also, I deleted the coins. I don't think we care about the coins really. Game start time. I don't know if we need that right now. So there's also a human spawn. Let's see if we can hard code that to another point. So I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll call this human spawn. And I'll just move this over like 100 pixels so they're not spawning right on top of each other because that would probably be pretty bad gameplay. 
But ultimately, we probably have a bunch of different spawns for humans or something. <laughs> Alright, so if they are a player, they're red. If they're a zombie, they turn green. We set the locations of them. We pick a random player from this player's array. We turn them into a zombie. This code in this code, it looks identical. So like what I would probably do is reuse it. Like so. So when you pick zombie, it just gets a random player, calls turn zombie, and that does the exact same code. I believe he's using turn zombie somewhere else to like when you collide, you turn the player into a zombie. <clears throat> uh, Kay says you could start a timer on game time start and the winner is the longest human alive uh, yeah we could try doing something like that can't you replace the code for setting the color x y in a zombie with a call to turn zombie oh uh, yeah that's, that's what I just did uh, so is it all through canvas or am I using something like pixel js yeah this is all through canvas Um, I think there's also logic that he added for like start game. Let's figure, let's figure out what start game is called. So I think he is like waiting for a certain amount of players to join, uh, here. I'm not sure what all zombie means. Game state all zombie is true. Game state of false. I'm not sure what's going on here with game state. If any player is not a zombie, then set this to false. If any player is a zombie, then set any zombie to true. I just wonder why game state is an if statement here. Like, this, shouldn't this always be checked? But we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, let's just try to follow very similar logic. Uh, so inside of the game controller, All right, I'll just go down here. Let's just go ahead and pull some of the stuff out. Or all zombies, no zombies if all zombies. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and use what he's using, but I might need to refactor this just a little bit. I might just put into a function called like function handle um, game. Okay, so all this stuff up here is like movement and gravity and stuff like that. I think it would make sense to have a function that says like handle Gameplay, game state, zombie. Okay, maybe uh, maybe it makes sense to handle game. I don't know, it's early. I just woke up, so this is all. Do this, copy all this out into a helper function so it's a little bit more declarative in the main tick loop. And I'll just do that. And then he has a Boolean called game state here. Which they say it's a uh, to know whether the game is being played or not. So I guess if enough players join, that's when we turn on this rule. Um, so maybe we should do like an enum here and say like game states, and then we could do like waiting. We could do playing, and that's it. <clears throat> Waiting or playing. So either waiting for players. Maybe I'll do that. Waiting for players or playing. And when the game is running, I'll just say like if game state dot waiting for players, else if game state is playing. There's two different things we can kind of do. I'll do handle playing state. We'll call that here, move that up. 
Otherwise, we'll do handle waiting state. Really, you could, this is kind of like a state machine. So like if you can kind of build it out in a state machine, it would make more sense. But we're going to basically say if players.length is greater than uh, players needed. Good start game equal to this. So if the number of players in the game is greater than players needed, which we don't have declared yet, so let's just go up here and make one. And I do have a, a constants file, so I'll put it here. I'll just say we need two players to play, and that should be good enough. So I'll just set the game state to game state of playing. Uh, let's go back up here, and I think I want to track game state like he was doing. But I'm going to type it. I want this thing to be typed, and it's going to be set as game state. Waiting for players. Well, I need to put that under the enum so we can use it. And we'll just continue like building upon this. Um, if should start game, we'll do this. And then we're going to go ahead and pick a zombie. Right, we should probably respawn everybody. So let's just call start game and see what this does again because I forget. It loops through all the players. It calls or sets them all the humans. So yeah, I'll just make another method called turn human. Um, and I will say human spawn in this color. It would probably be a constant for right now. So let's go to constants and I will say export const human color is equal to this. Zombie color. I'm going to make it lime green like that. I think these need to be strings. Actually, how is he doing it? He's just setting, okay. I mean, at some point we'll actually have like images for the, the players and the zombies. So like having these come from constants uh, doesn't really make sense, but it's fine. We'll say zombie color. So turn human, turn zombie. This one will spawn the human. Uh, this one should probably be a player as well. So like it takes in a player object, and then it's going to either turn them to a human, or it's going to turn them into a zombie. This one should be false for is zombie. Um, Human color. I think I screwed something up here. So let's go ahead and just do this. Turn human to player, and I can also say players out for each turn human. That's a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. Uh, let me block someone from chat. Hold on. Wait, did I have the wrong person? Oh no, I think I just deleted the wrong person. Um, give me two seconds. Uh -huh. All right, can you type again, Karen Deep? I, th I was trying to block. I thought I saw someone spawn. Um, I don't know. Sorry. I, I, th I think I just read something wrong. All right. Let's go through this chat messages. Potato. Why you should somewhere use arrow functions and somewhere normal? Um, 
really, I typically use, I should be using um, arrow functions as much as I can. That's just my preference. I'm kind of jumping around between arrow and normal functions. I think the one reason you want to use a normal function is if you want the hoisting. So that'll bring your function up to the top of the file, which means that we can call functions before they're even like declared. But if I do const, like it kind of forces me to have this thing uh, declared. Actually, I don't think it matters because this is going to be a callback. It really depends on your callbacks and stuff. But I'll, yeah, I'll make a note to come back and make that consistent because I'm just like doing whatever. Okay, is this person right here? I don't know what they're saying. Are you guys speaking in a different language, like Indian? I think I just banned someone because they're speaking Indian. <laughs> so my bad. Um, let's just go ahead and go over here and look at the game real quick. All right, my bad. I didn't mean to kick you guys. I Whenever I see those icons, like you see his name has like heart icons in it. I think it's that bot who comes in and just starts pasting links. So I just was trying to block that. But I realize that you're an actual person who just has hearts in their name, so I apologize. Um, all right, so we are going to look at what are we doing? Handle waiting state. So if we should start the game, if so, first thing we should do is if we're in state waiting for players, we go ahead and start the game, change the game state to playing. This one will never be called again. And then we'll start going to this one, handle playing state. So for playing state, <clears throat> I think I can get rid of that game state thing because it's already being checked above that. And then I can say if, if all zombies, so if every player in the game is a zombie, I'll say players.every. This is a little thing you can do. So allow to clean that up. And you can also do if any, so I could say some, and then I don't have to do this loop anymore. Get rid of that. Don't need con. We don't need let. We could just do const. Um. Now I'm okay with them speaking. Um. Punjabi is that what you said it is? I just is the first time I've seen someone speak just a different language in my chat, so I thought it was a bot. Also early for me, so I'm still waking up. All right, so if any zombie, so if any zombie is not set, then reset the game, which is, what are we trying to do here? So we're not, we don't care about scores anymore. I got rid of the score stuff. Maybe we'll add that back later on, but I just want to keep this simple. If all zombies, so that means we need to end the game, which really means we can just call... I think we just call start game. Now I'm not sure why there's a reset game and a start game. If the player's length is greater than or equal to start players. I think he's saying to say like if someone were to leave halfway through the game, then you don't want to just like start the game again. You want to reset the game. Uh, I'm using an extension called error lens. So if there's any errors in TypeScript or um, ESLint, that will put it here. Performance now game length. Okay, so he has a game length. Okay, let's just grab that. I think that's important. And then maybe a timer to show it. So let's go to constants. Let's pull that in. Go ahead and export that game length of, <clears throat> was that 30 seconds? You got 30 seconds game time. So let's go back and where we did start game, I'm gonna add that code back that he had. Start game, he's gonna set this to equal to performance dot now. And then this thing could be pulled out here. Set it equal to zero so TypeScript knows it's a certain type of type. So if the uh, current game now 
minus the game start time is greater than game length, then what we need to do... I'm not too sure what's going on here. If players.length is greater than start players. So if the game is ended, and we have enough players to start, then we start game. Otherwise, we need to go to waiting. So like, let's just do like game state is equal to game state waiting for players. Um, okay, I think I know why he says reset game. The reset game is basically function, which probably just sets them all back to like normal location. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that in. So for every player is zombie falls, set a color. Let's just make them some random color. Make them pink. Okay. So if there is no zombie left, reset the game. I wonder if we can just play, do start game here. And that'll automatically, that'll change game state back to that. If all zombies, dark players, oh, what did I call this one? Players needed is two. We'll get there. I wonder if reset game should just change the state to like. I'll just do that. I don't know if that's a good, a good idea. So if we need more players or if we have enough players, then we start the game else. We reset the game and then all zombies. I don't know if we even need to set that score. We don't care about. Otherwise, if the game has ended because it's just gone over 30 seconds. We do the same thing here, which you see this duplicate code. There's two things that call the exact same um, logic. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out to like a function called in game. Go ahead and run that. And uh, yeah, now we could just go ahead and say in game and that'll figure that out. And then I can call in game here and that'll figure that out. And then what else do we need? Emit some scores, humans one, okay. And then I can also just do this. If all zombies, I might rename that all zombies to something else, like is everyone a zombie? There we go, that makes more sense in my head. Is anyone a zombie? If anyone is a zombie, then we start the game. Or, sorry, if no one is a zombie, Is everyone a zombie? Is no one a zombie? Wait, why is it? Why are we doing this? So if we're playing right now, we're literally playing. There's just should be a zombie, and the only time we ever need to change that wouldn't that be when they're all zombies? Like, why do we? I don't know why we do that. I don't think we need that, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> All right. Maybe we can also just like emit if all the zombies leave. Oh. So if there's no more zombies left on the map, then we need to like restart this all, which I could probably just call in game. Oh, okay. So like if that's exactly what it's for, then all zombies left for no more zombies in game if there are some players i'm gonna say if every player is not a zombie 
So if there's no more zombies in the game, just end the game. I think that should work. Maybe. But are we here right now? Console log here. Yeah, why is this getting called so many times? We should be in the waiting state. If game state is playing, then we're going to call this. If game state is waiting for players. Uh, I might have to just restart my server because I think this is getting here somewhere. Nope. Why am I just stuck? Just stuck in the UI sitting here. All right, let's debug a little bit. Um, I'm just stuck here at the top. Nothing's moving. Can we figure out if we're even getting WebSocket messages? We're getting a bunch of controls and players. That seems fine. But I'm guessing there's something that keeps on resetting us back to position zero, zero. So let's look at reset game real quick. And let's figure out what is calling this. So is anything calling end game? Oh, of course. So there's no zombies in the game, right? So we just keep on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, there is no zombies. So it just keeps on resetting over and over and over again. So like what we want to do is we want to have a staging point. And I know the person who worked on this code, he's probably like, dude, I already implemented all this. Why are you redoing this? Um, because I just wanted to do some refactoring along the way and try to pull in all his pull in all of his changes because uh, I think it did good work, but it's just a matter of him like having to pull it into the main branch and get that merged in. Uh, and I also just want to kind of learn it, so I want to learn what he did. Yeah, so waiting for players, we should not call handle playing state it should have gotten out of this state so when we called in game it should have either yeah we shouldn't keep on calling reset name over and over again i don't think we should probably reset the game uh and then we should probably get out of this state which i thought i added to reset game yeah i did Yeah, this is one of those days it's just I can't think. I don't want to I don't want to code to be honest with you all. But people like watch my stream, so I'm just going to continue streaming for a little bit. Reset game is called over and over again, which I don't know why because this should not be called again once we change back to waiting for players. So if we go to in game handle playing state, this should have only been called once, but it's getting called like tons of times. We go to handle players. If we're in waiting for players, we handle waiting state. And if we have enough players, which this probably needs to be greater than equal to, that might be the issue. I don't know if that would be the issue. Just go here. Okay, a user connected. Yeah, if you guys okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna rechange my mindset. You guys are having like a full on like discussion between each other. Um can you guys just go and like give each other your phone numbers and call each other? It might be a little bit easier because it's it, at this point it is kind of spam. And I don't know what you're saying, so it's kind of unrelated to what I'm coding at this point. <laughs> Why is this so hard? Why is everyone retracting their messages too? Uh, 
<laughs> Could it also be because you don't have any if statements checking or something? All right, let me focus. I keep reading the chat. All right, so when we connect, it's, we're, okay, let's just do this. I'm just gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this. I don't know what's going on right now. It should be calling waiting for players over and over again. Handle playing state. Why is it stuck in handle playing state? When the game first loads, it just goes straight to handle playing state, which doesn't make sense because we should be in waiting for players when this thing first loads. Now, I will see that game state is declared, but it's never read. I must have this declared somewhere else. Yeah, I must be just reading the wrong thing. Hold on. If, oh my gosh. I hate coding. Look at this. If game state waiting for players, I don't even have a condition here. Like I'm not even checking anything. Dumb as that. Handle waiting for state. Okay. Now I can move around. And now if I were to load in another tab, I have a zombie here and I have a non-zombie. So we should be in handle playing state. Now the idea is if I was a zombie and I leave, I reset and I go back to the spawning point because now we're just waiting again. If I come back, the game has started. I think it'd be cool to have like something explaining, like showing the countdown timer and also stating like, are we playing or not? Um, so how did he do that? Somewhere he checks if they're colliding, uh, which will be here. Let's just copy some of this code. Are these people still having a full on like love discussion in my channel? I'll say happy Diwali to you. What is Diwali? Is that like a good day? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's nested for you to need that. Hold on. I need the for loop. I'll tell you all straight up, I've been playing some StarCraft 2 lately and uh, been burned out from coding and YouTube and stuff. So I really just want to go play some StarCraft right now. But... How uh, I was just trying to like continuously publish videos because screen is kind of like a job, but not really. All right, so I think handle playing state, we should go and we should loop over all the players. And if player playing state, yeah, we should probably pass in the current player, which I believe we're like looping over, or we were looping over it. Um, yeah, we don't need to loop over the player. Let's just go ahead and copy, like... <laughs> Y'all are funny. So here, here's the perspective. Like, let's say I invited a bunch of people over to my house to watch a movie. 
and then you two just sit in a corner talking a different language and you don't even like want to watch the movie or talk about the movie. Like, oh, I, I'd like to play Zerg. Zerg is my race. I tried some Terran a little bit. Terran's pretty cool too. But uh, Zerg's my main thing. All right, so for every player of players, we need to check. Oh, he's doing like a double for loop here. So I'm going to make this a little bit different. I'm going to say zombies is equal to players.filter player player dot is zombie. So find all the zombies. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the humans like this. Find all the humans. And then I'm going to loop over the zombies. So for const zombie of zombies. And then I'm going to check if there's an overlap between the zombie and any human for const human of humans, like so. Pull that out. Got some double for loop going on. If there's an overlap, which I don't remember how I did this, I think I have a Kajion. I'm going to export that. Is overlap it player bounty box. If the zombie is overlapping with the human, we are going to turn uh, turn zombie. And that will be the human is we're going to turn into a zombie. And the, the zombie could be potentially overlapping with a ton of humans, so we're just going to turn all of them. Um, I think this is all we need. So hopefully this code... It, I think it reads a little bit more clear. Get all the zombies, get all the humans. Loop over the zombies for every human. Check if they're colliding. Turn the human into a zombie. Uh, and I think that's it. So now, if I were to collide, I'm a zombie now. But I also get reset back to the beginning of the map. Um, I think it would make more sense to just turn them into a zombie right then and there and not reset them. So like we don't need to change their, their spawn. We could just do this. All right, I'm a zombie now. So also the game timer. Um, let's set it equal to something really low. I'll set it equal to like five seconds or something. So that's that's kind of broken. It spawns us all back to the beginning, but. What are we doing? <clears throat> I want to delete these console logs. Oh, did I say set the five seconds out loud and I set it to four? Sometimes I do that. I'll say something out loud, but then in my head, I, I just do something else. Um, so when we are... Let's delete the console logs like I said I was going to do. Handle playing state. If there's no more zombies, we end the game. End the game should basically... Uh, let's see. It's going to call reset game. Actually, no. This will call... The other one. Yeah, I just kicked those two people speaking whatever language they were speaking. Sorry, it's just annoying. Like, there's nothing they're saying anything related to this game that I can understand. So it's like, why are you guys in a stream talking about something that I can't? Like, it it doesn't contribute to the uh, the conversation. So I hope they uh, exchange some phone numbers, and they can keep chatting chatting away on their own time. Reset game. So this is basically setting everyone to a zombie false and then moving them to the same start location, which I guess it works okay. This one should probably... What does start game do again? Just basically turns everyone to a human and then picks one. So there's an issue with what we're doing here. I think start game and reset game should probably do something a little bit different. 
I think reset game should I don't know what they should do, but uh <clears throat> Where do I do the cumin spawn? Turn human, turn zombie. You start reset game or start game. Pick human. Turn human. I mean, this one should spawn them all back, right? I'm not sure why it's spawning them all in the same location. Turn zombie. It, oh, this one has to. Oh, okay, I see. Right now, the spawning coordinates are just uh, static. I might actually change this into like a spawn player. Spawn, re spawn players. Okay, and this is just going to loop over every player. And then if they are a zombie or if they're a human, I'm going to set their location based on that. Because I think there's like an issue where this used to set the location of the zombie when you got turned. But now I just want to turn you into a zombie right then and there where you're at in the map and not like change you. So I'm going to say if player dot is zombie, else do this zombie spawn. I don't know if this is a good idea, but we're going to do this. And I should really be consistent with how I'm doing these functions. I'm doing like arrow functions and function keywords everywhere. Okay, so respawn player. So when you turn into a human, Let's do the single responsibilities principle. When you turn to a human, that's it. You just turn to a human. There's no additional stuff. But when the game ends, we are going to respawn everybody. So change their, their state from human to zombie, whatever, and then respawn them. Reset game. That moves everyone back to the starting board. Uh, technically, we could just do respawn players. Get rid of this. We could also, I think in the VX, the VY, we should probably add that in, right? Let's do this. All right, is this going to work? Let's just try this out real quick. Although I think it just spawned the, what the heck? Okay, so when I touch the other player, it should have ended the game. So let's go ahead and find like where that's happening. And I bet you the person who originally added this functionality is probably just like laughing at me. Like, you know, this is taking you so long to add a simple thing that I just added. But again, this is also just like a learning experience for me as well. Handle playing state. If there is no more zombies in game, okay. Or I'm gonna wrap this in parentheses. I don't think we need to, but just in case, okay. We got ES Lent will tell me if it's wrong. Or if the game length is greater than that, or I think I deleted something that we needed. Uh, no more humans. So if every player is, I have this. If no more zombies in game, if no more humans, if no more humans in the game. No more zombies. If, hold on. Why is this so confusing? If there's no more humans, that means that every player is a zombie. Then we end the game. If there's no more zombies, that means that every player, there's no zombies for every player. Do we have to check both of these? It seems kind of weird, but I think we kind of do. Because if someone leaves, If let's say there's two people, one's a zombie, one's a human, the human leaves, there's a zombie left. That would end the game because there's no more humans. If there's two people and the zombie leaves, then we'd have to check to make sure that there's no more zombies either. I don't know. Okay, does this work? I think this works now. Oh, is it picking the same zombie every time? No, it's not. And then we also have the countdown timer. So about after four seconds, the game just ends and we restart. 
Although I don't think it picked the new zombie, so we might have to like. Oh yeah, it did. All right, so I think that works okay. I'm not I'm not too happy with what we added, but I think it works okay. So in the in the UI, I mean, we could try to display the time left. So like when the game starts, we could probably emit like game started and game ended or something. So start game could basically say, uh, let's see. Yeah, I tried the add lerp. I don't know if I did it right, to be honest, but it seems like it's working okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say like emit game date change. I'll just say emit game state. How about that? So we want the front end needs to know if we're playing or if we're waiting so they can display maybe a message or something. Um, now we could have some like hard coded logic in the front end that's check if everyone's a player, if everyone's a human or everyone's a zombie. Um, but maybe it makes more sense to just like when the game ends, we're going to emit the game state, which will be this. Do that. And then in game, on players, that game. I think a reset game is a bad name for it. Maybe we should call it like go to waiting state. And then for in game, we are going to basically emit, emit uh, game state like that. So we'll go to the socket controller and we're going to export a function here called export const uh, emit game state which I guess is just going to be a string. I guess technically I could call it key, uh, what do we call it, game state? Now, since this is something used in the front end and the back end, I might actually put this in a global def, like so. Emit game state. This thing needs to take in game state. And then I'll say io.emit game state of game state. Now, I don't think this will actually send over a string. I think this will have some issues, obviously, because I don't have game state is not defined. Waiting for players, game controller 43. Um, okay. So I thought, I mean, when you have a global TS file here, like you would think that it would have access to this. I wonder if I actually say like waiting, waiting for players. Do we have to do that for this not to crash? Interesting. Why would this be crashing? Yeah, it's in a global, right? So like if it's global, you should have access to it in all your TypeScript files, I thought, but maybe not. Maybe there's like a different way I have to do this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it back. Well, I don't think you can import it from globals because the only way you can import it is if you export it. But if you export it, it like doesn't, you, like you shouldn't have to import it in my opinion. I don't think that's how the globals work in TypeScript. So, I mean, I could just do this, find out where game state is and just make it an export from this module file itself. And then I can import it over here. And that'll work. I'll have to look into that later. I don't waste too much time on that TypeScript issue. So let's look at the network tab real quick and let's look at the transport and let's see. Oh, yikes. It's gonna be a lot. Okay, so on the front end, when we do socket, I'm going to say socket.on game state. Go ahead and preserve this variable somewhere. So game state is equal to game state. So that the front end can kind of change what 
it's storing for game state. Uh, I'll just set it equal to an empty string right now. I'll just set it to null or something. All right, and I got a super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, I keep struggling with OOP code splitting when I make games in JavaScript. Do you have any tips or like any resources to learn about? Code splitting. Um, so when you say code splitting, you mean like making separate files? Is that what you're saying? Like going from one file that has like a bunch of random things in it to kind of separating that into smaller modules? <laughs> My advice, if that was your question, I would say just group things together that are like, that, that care about the same concerns, right? So anything related to your map, that's why I have like a map controller over here. Everything that's related to the map, the tiles, uh, where the players are, where the zombies are, I would just put them all here inside some type of map class if you want to use object-oriented programming, or I have just a module that has functions on it. <laughs> And this thing has the responsibility of managing, updating, tracking the map. Uh, that's like the first step of kind of splitting your code up into smaller modules and files. I think it really helps. You can take it to the next level and do like encapsulation. So everything that's working with the game manager shouldn't understand the underlying data, like the data structure of, like it shouldn't know if players is an array or if players is something else. It should just have methods it can call on your class called like, uh, get players or is player zombie or something like that. Uh, I don't think I'm taking it to that level. What I'm doing is I'm actually like inside of the game controller. I just grab some methods called like get collidables from the map controller. And then I can use that array of collidables here. Okay, so at the very least, like I wouldn't import or use any private data structures from your encapsulated class. I would export some type of functions that you can use. But that's, I guess, my that's my advice on that one. Um, someone says something about a, a TS file. Hey, .t .ts files are not meant for declarations. They're meant for external non-TypeScript. Okay, so. I think the fact that I had it like equal to something, I don't know. I have to go look that up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to add mobile controls. I know you were asking last stream. Um, but I just have higher priorities than adding mobile controls. Maybe we can try to add that though, put it on a to-do list. How long have I been streaming for? 58 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, I was just trying to, oh yeah, what was I trying to do? So like when the game state changes, we're going to go ahead and print that out on the front end. So I'll just say like game state. Uh, I will say console log game state. So, and then hopefully, game state comes in and says playing, and then it says playing again. Although it's a little bit delayed, it seems. It should happen the moment we respawn. Okay, it does. It comes in twice, so I think we're sending too many messages. Um, let's figure out where we emit game state. We call it in start game. Start game is called... Here, uh, let me go ahead and move that function call into that helper function. This should probably call it here. Okay, does respawn players call that? No. Does pick zombies call that? No. So I'm looking into why it's emitting this twice. It's probably, let's see, emit game state, game state, start game. Okay, that's why. I am emitting it inside the actual state itself, so I'll just go ahead and do that. I don't know if this is the best place to put it. We could probably put it into a different function. This is, 
this function might be responsible for too many things at this point, but it's small enough that it's probably fine. So let's restart. We only get it once now. That's good. Uh, and then if we hit, we lose. At some point, we could probably have a game state of like in game where like you have like a, a five second pause at the end of the game just so you can reflect upon your life. And then we start the game again. Uh, let's see if we can get that timer displayed. So when we start the game, I guess, would it make more sense to have the back end send over the time left? Probably. Um, I'll just find emit. Where's my socket controller? I'm in it right now. I'm just going to go ahead and make another one called emit. Emit time left. I mean, we could probably include this in like a game state object that wraps like the game state and the time left. I'll just do this though. It's probably fine. So we'll just publish a, a number. The front end will look for that number. Like so, time left. Not a fan of this, but sometimes it's okay to just do the, do the simplest thing that works. So we just want to display these things. So like we should have a, some type of countdown timer at the top. So let's go back to our index.html. And I'm just going to make a, you know, we can actually draw this on the screen. So if we go back to the render function of the front end, I think we called it draw. We clear the entire game. And then at the very bottom, uh, we could probably render out. So it's CTX fill text. Um, and we could just say if game game state oops is equal to playing. And this is where I wanted it to be in the global file, so I could like easily just use this, but I guess I could potentially just say like game state. I think I can just import it and just do that. If it's equal to playing then we are going to display the countdown timer. So I'll just say like time left is something. And then we can say time left. I think I also need an X and a Y. Yeah. So for right now, let's do like 20, 20. And it's probably going to be in like a different color. Let's do like CTX fill style is equal to black. I'm going to make sure that this is consistent. But we got a, we got a problem here. Do not read property undefined of emit. Something is crashing. Are these things? Why is it printing out random names here? Okay, why is this crashing? Emit player, socket controller 17. I was not defined. So something is definitely breaking. Um, now the question is, is what is breaking? What did I add that broke this code? I'm not getting any time left messages. This was working fine before I added the time left, I believe. So I'm thinking that either the server is crashing, which I don't think I even added a emit time left. Am I even doing this yet? So if I'm not emitting time left, emit players. Oh, okay, I think this is because I'm importing from a index file. Yeah, this this is the issue with sharing code between your front end and back end. You're coupling stuff together, and when you do that, you have a chance of just not doing something properly. Especially if your back end is going to be written like Go or something. I, I would probably try to like not have code in your front end being imported from your back end. Like you need something from the back end, either send it over with the socket event or redeclare it. Because you saw just importing that constant from an index file caused the server to try to run on the front end, which is not good. So we'll just do this for right now. Um, 
So let's go to game state and let's find out where we're doing the other one. We're waiting for players. So if it's waiting for players, we are going to go ahead and do this. We're waiting for players. Like so. Yeah, I don't know why I call it player playing. Thank you for that. Time left is equal to that. Let's see what happens here. Let's delete one. So it should be rendering on the canvas that text, but for some reason it's not rendering it. Because, am I, am I setting this? Let's go ahead and print this out real quick. It's undefined still. So something is not setting this. And I think we should probably just set it to waiting for, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it to undefined, but when you first join the match, I'm going to go ahead and go to the game controller. I think when you first join, do we send you anything? We emit the map. I think we should also emit game state. Which this was a little hard because we don't have the game state here, so we have to like say get game state. And I don't know if I like the socket controller being coupled to the game state. I rather the game controller like have to invoke methods on here, so I need to rethink how that's working. But I'll just make another function here that's going to just return. the game state. So when you first join, it should emit that. So then we should get waiting for players, which we do, but it's still not rendering out this text. Waiting for players. Bill style is that. Like, what are we doing wrong here? Are we getting here? It's not even getting there. Game state is equal to waiting for players. If game state is equal to this, then we should be filling this out. But for some reason, it's never getting here. So it's kind of weird. Game state is undefined. If I press play, still undefined for a while. At some point, we should get the game state. Or not. Okay, so I'm assuming that we're just not setting this correctly. So let's go to where we listen for this. Socket on game state. Okay, so I have a, a, a naming method. Sometimes I do that, where you, like, you name the same thing in the callback, the same thing that your global state is set to. And it, like, obviously it's not going to work. All right, so this is waiting for players up there. So how do you change the fill style? I mean, the fill fill size. Um, I don't know. Max width. Is it like this? Canvas CTX change fill size. Change text fill size. Isn't it called like text size or something? Text style? All right, let's just go to Stack Overflow. Is it called font size? It's called font is equal to this. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make that larger. It's just called font. Now the issue with this is that I have to make sure I reset it up here or else it's going to change the font to like be huge everywhere. But on top of the player, we don't want it to be huge. We want it to be a certain size. So in fact, I'll actually just set it here right before I call fill text. I'll go ahead and just put this as like 18 pixels. Let's see how this looks. Okay, let's do a little bit smaller. I'll do 16. Um, all right, waiting for players. And then when I join, 
time left is zero. So that's also cool. Um, but what I need to do is change that to 50-50. And the time left should also be coming in. So like if I were to add this back, because this isn't breaking. Go ahead and do this. Waiting for players, time left. Did I not get a time left event? I did not because I don't think I'm emitting it. So it seems kind of wasteful to emit that every single time. Every single tick tick rate. All right, game controller. Where are we doing this? Do we do this every tick rate? Probably not the best. We can also just, when the game starts, we could send a, a timestamp, like a performance now timestamp, and the front end can be in charge of like, showing the difference and maybe that's kind of what we should do instead of sending the time every single time because it's like not that important to have the exact time left sent every single iteration so i might actually change that so i'm going to get rid of emit time left and instead i'm just going to add it right here to game state itself so i'm not going to go ahead and just do this game state and then time left is going to be or i'll say start time is equal to something is a number and we could just go ahead and just do that. But now it's like this is very specific to, I might just say emit game started like that. Emit game ended. Because this, when the game ends, like we don't care about. Uh, Yeah, let me rethink what I'm doing. Maybe I will have an emit that I'll broadcast to everybody. So I'll just do like emit time left, IO emit. Yeah, I'll just do it once. So when we change, when we start the map, when we do start game, I'm just going to emit the time left. In time Okay, emit start time. That's what I meant to do. So this will be start time. And then when we start the game, we're going to emit a new start time. But we also need to emit the end time, right? So I'll do this, emit game times. How about that? Game times. I'm just changing my mind every second. So sometimes it helps to stop and just really think about what you're doing because, or else you run to like what I'm doing and you just jump around. Emit game times. And this could be a start time. And then game start time plus game time, game length. Yeah, it might be fun to make it into 3JS. All right, so anyway, this is game times, and this comes over, and I get back start time in time. So I know exactly when the server thinks this should end. And then what I could do is I have to do a countdown timer. So I'm going to go ahead and say start time. In time, I'm making this super, super complex. I think I think there could be an easier way to do this. <clears throat> I would just say start time is equal to server start time, and then in time is equal to server in time, like so. Why is this crashing? Emit start time. So I don't need to emit start time anymore. So let's go here and delete that. So the server doesn't crash anymore. Now the front end just needs to display that. So like what we could do is over here, we could say server, I'll say in time minus start time. 
but I need to get the current time. So I'll say like now is equal to performance dot now. Now I don't know if they'll sync up the front end performance now and the back end performance now. I think those might actually not be what we want. We might need a time dot now. I would ping the start time on the game start and just keep track of the front end and count. Well, the thing is you have to count down, right? I want to start at 30 seconds and count down, so 29, 28, which means that the server needs to tell the front end, like, how long are these games lasting? Because let's say you can change the length of a game depending on how many players there are. If there's only three players, the game needs to take longer because it's going to be harder for a zombie to find somebody. You accidentally refactored your game state listener instead of time left. Oh, dang. Good catch. Undo everything. There. That's what I wanted to do. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do end time. Start and duration. Yeah, maybe that's a better approach. So call it game length, maybe. And that could just be called game length. And then I don't need to pass in a in time. This thing could just be game length, game length, server, game length. Are we, are we there? Is this going to be good? All right, so I mean, regardless of what we have, we should be able to render it out. <clears throat> so like we should do the game length minus, I'll put this up here. I'll do game length. So that'll be like 300,000 or 30,000 for three, 30 seconds minus, I think we just do date dot now. We'll take the current time and now minus the start time. We broke something. Back end is crashing on something. Game time plus game length. Okay, we just need to do this. Wait, why is it complaining? Oh, it's already imported. Yeah, actually, I don't think this thing should import it. Let's just go ahead and this will take it in. Game length. Because I don't want this thing really coupled to like the game logic. If possible. But it is a constant, so I guess it's fine anyway, but... Look at that. But I think it's also because the start time is a performance now. But the, the back end is going to be something else. Maybe. Uh, let's just do debugger. I'm just using Node.js for the backend. Okay, game length is four seconds. Date dot now will give us some thing. Start time is 2080. Yeah, so I don't think I should be using performance now here. I should probably be using like well, it's either that or I could do performance dot now in the front end, but I don't think those are going to be Accurate, maybe? That's weird. Yeah, I think performance now is actually like the, the amount of seconds that has elapsed since the start of the game server, maybe? I'm tired of putting right now. Let's see. So when we emit that thing, let's just go ahead and emit game times. 
So when we start the game, I'm just going to try this. Day dot now. Simple enough. Super hacky. But I want to just figure out if I can get this to print out. Go ahead and stop that. Okay, that fixes it. Yeah, I mean, I, the issue is because I was using performance.now and date.time, and, like, they're different. And the front end, the front end's performance now is going to be different from the server's performance now. So you kind of have to, like, it'd probably make more sense to have the server send over a server time every tick. But, yeah, I mean, that's good. Other than what I need to do is, like, render it to be, I don't know, who fixed free? Oh, I should probably divide it by a thousand. So I will do divide it by a thousand. That'll give us the seconds. But then we should also say two fixed of three, maybe. All right, how does this work? Then when I touch, we go back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the constants real quick, and I'm gonna set this to 30,000. There we have it. Um, I do want to show off a little thing that we're doing. Um, so this is cool, like open source tile editor that you can use. What's going on here? But if you, it's called Tiled, and this is what I'm actually using to like create the 2D map. So if I go to Maps and I go to Tiles.tsx, that's the wrong file. If I go to Platforms.tsx. Um, okay, I can't minimize it for some reason. Um, why is the tiles not okay? Well, I was going to show you this because I thought it was cool to show, but for some reason. Not find WebSockets game images. Why? It's there. Literally there. If I go to client images. Maybe I moved it to somewhere else. Let's do this. Okay, so this is like the, the tile sheet. And I was gonna show you how it works, but it might just this might just be awful. Let's just put some tiles here that and then also I will put random block over here let's see if we can actually save this file and then if we go back and save the server I think that'll show up here now okay so you can easily like just change the map around I do think the blocks are a little big like 128 pixels by 128 pixels might be too big either that or we need to make the characters bigger so it seems that like I don't know. Because right now, like, you can't really jump from platforms to platforms really easily. But it's a work in progress. So that was mainly for um, Bree, if he's still watching. But that's how you can basically just, like, modify your, your map and stuff. Open source, super cool program. Um, what else should we do? To be honest, um, I kind of wanted to just wrap this up. But here is the code here. Um, you all can play around with what I just added or look at what I added. If you want to, I'm going to go ahead and just commit this. I'll say working on bringing in game state logic. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Whatever. Change that. Commit this. Yeah, every game block is 128 by 128. I make make it. I might try to make it smaller. The issue if you make the block smaller, then there's a lot more time spent like 
creating your map because every single block you have to place by hand. You can like click and drag different blocks like this and place a group, which makes it a little bit easier, but I think if you can just make bigger blocks, it might be pretty good. Or does it account for the missing curves? Is it the whole 128 by 1? I will say there's like a little line. There's some tearing between my tiles. There is a way to actually like fix that. I have to go back and read the docs. Actually, let me add one more player. I want to make sure this works. Okay, here's the issue. When you first join, I think we're sending over like a performance now or something because that was kind of weird. Let me fix that real quick. So when you first join the map, which I don't even remember where I did that. Maybe that's the issue. We're not admitting when you first join. Um, I think I could just do this, emit game times. And I think this is an issue because we're emitting it to everybody. I'm just going to do this real quick. Socket emit. We're just going to say start time is equal to date.now. Game length is going to be equal to game length. I know we're just duplicating code, but at this point I just want to get it fixed and commit it. An extra dot here. Okay, is everyone's time synced up? This person's time started at... Okay, obviously that's not going to work either. Start time. Whatever, we'll think about this later. I think I just need to rethink what we're doing here. But... Um, yeah, the code is in the description link. Feel free to, or the chat. I put the code in the chat. But I'm good. I'm done. I'm, I'm done streaming for right now. I'm going to go uh, take a break. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this. I know I didn't really publish it for you guys to all play around with together, but uh, yeah, that's what we got. So give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and be sure to stick around and join me Discord if you want to kind of continue watching this as I add features onto it at a later point. Uh, where's my...